1609, and Galileo is demonstrating his first telescope. English settlers heading to Virginia are shipwrecked and become the first to settle on the island of Bermuda. The Spanish and the Dutch agree to a 12-year ceasefire following their 80 years of war. And Spain recognizes Dutch independence. Bohemia is granted religious freedom. But in England, the king, King James, rules. Church and state are intertwined and freedom of worship and religious liberty is still but a dream. There will be a growing movement for religious freedom over time, however. And at the forefront of the new thinking, a group who will eventually be called Baptists begins to emerge. Like many other good people before me, I've been in prison for my faith. My crime? To write and then send to the king a copy of my book, in which I ask that we might be allowed to worship as we please. And for this, despite my good upbringing, my family connections, my cousin is a knight, my uncle a former sheriff of London, I have been in this prison these past two years, and I doubt I shall leave here, at least not in this earthly body. When I look back, life has been good. My wife Joan and I were blessed with seven children. We were provided for between the money from my family and my practice as a lawyer. But we would not have been true to our religious convictions if we had not spoken out for what we believed to be true, for what we had read in scripture. What Helwes believed to be true was that all should be able to read the Bible for themselves and to interpret it under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. He wanted the church to be true to the model of the New Testament. And he wanted a tolerant society, believing in religious freedom as a fundamental Christian doctrine. All should be free to determine their own attitude to God, whether they be Christian, Jew or Turk. To this end, Helwes and his wife opened their home to the early Puritans and subsequently developed a good friendship with John Smith, the dissenter. The Separatist Church was formed and began to meet in secret, growing into a second congregation. But the church authorities could not tolerate this growing independence and began to clamp down on the dissenters. Helwes was one of those who fled to Holland with his friend, John Smith. The meetings in the East India Bakehouse in Bacchestrat are still vividly in my mind. Those of us that left for Holland met there. The Dutch were good friends to us, and although we did not speak their language, we could converse in Latin, so we were able to discuss matters of faith and doctrine. We worshipped as we chose, praying and studying the Bible. There was no need for priests to intercede for us, we could do that for ourselves for the first time. We were free to worship as we wished. There was a price to pay. I left my wife and family behind in England, believing that they would be safe. Joan was arrested and sent to trial. She, being a woman of conviction, refused to swear their oath and was sent to prison for it. John Smith and I found ourselves disagreeing, for example, about whether to join the Waterlanders, although I remained his steadfast friend throughout. And he was the man who baptised me and the others in our group, according to the principle and practice established in the New Testament of baptising believers. The disagreements between Smith and Helwes had made life difficult, and Helwes desired to return to England to present his book a short declaration of the mystery of iniquity to King James, meant that a small band of around 10 or 12 of those early Baptists left Amsterdam, knowing that a return to England could be fatal. I came back from Amsterdam in the full knowledge that I might well face persecution. 
but not to have returned would have been against what I myself am teaching. Do I not encourage my readers of my book to endure suffering and persecution rather than flee from it? To have stayed in Amsterdam would have been to put my own integrity into question. Our brother, Edmund Whiteman, was he not martyred at the stake for the crime of petitioning the king on the very same topics on which I wrote? Did he not ask for religious liberty for all? I pray that he might be the last religious martyr to be burned at the stake. He was no heretic, but a good and honest man who stood firm for his convictions. Those early Baptists returning from Amsterdam soon founded the first Baptist congregation on English soil in Spitalfields in the East End of London. At about the same time, Helwys' book was published and he sent a signed copy to the king. The king's response? He put Helwys in Newgate Prison and left him there. I wrote, if the king's people be obedient and true subjects, obeying all humane laws made by the king, our lord the king can require no more for men's religion to God is betwixt God and themselves. The king shall not answer for it. Neither may the king be judge between God and man. King James is not ready to hear such words. He does not believe in religious freedom for all. But I believe it will come. And those of us who have taken the risk embarked on the adventure and paid the ultimate price. We will have stepped out in faith for a reason. It may take some time, but I truly believe that we will see a time when people will be free to worship as they wish. Every individual will be free to determine their own attitude to God. And even though we may believe them to be mistaken in those beliefs, they will not be the subject of any kind of persecution. It may not happen in 10 years or 50 years, but it will happen. And my hope is that in 400 years time, a time almost impossible for me to comprehend, that those who bear the name Baptist will know why it matters.